What's up everybody? Today I'm going to walk you through how I do an LED dotted fretboard. So let's jump right into it. Uh, some things you'll need for this are 5mm LED flat top diode, DC 6 to 12 volt resistors, some thin wire, 9 volt battery, lead wires, shrink tube, switch, battery box, and a 9 volt battery connector. You can get all of these components on Amazon and the LEDs usually come in a pack of 100 with the correct resistors included. The LED diode has two legs, one short and one long. The long leg is going to be the positive hookup and the short will be the negative. The resistor can go on either side and it is extremely important. Without it, the diodes will burn out instantly. You'll only need one resistor to hook up all these and I usually put mine somewhere on my lead wires going to the switch. To prep my fretboard, I cut the fret slots, then draw my center line and tapers on both the front and back of the fretboard. This gives me the guidelines I need to work within. After that, I find the center point for each fret that's going to be getting an LED, and I punch a hole to help uh, center my drill bit. I use three different bits. First is a small pilot bit going all the way through. Then I flip the board over and use a larger bit to recess the LED and leave room for the leads. I set the depth stop on my drill press so that all of the holes are at a uniform depth. Then I flip it back over and drill the final five millimeter hole for the LED. The next step is to route out the channels for the connection wires and the sides of each hole for the leads. I'm not doing double dots on the 12th fret because the LED will be the center of my compass inlay, but the principle and the execution would still be the same if you were doing double dots. I route the wire and lead channels with a Dremel and router base and use a spiral cutting bit. Then I push the diodes in, making sure they're fully seated, and the legs are all oriented in the same direction. I then use some medium CA glue to secure them in place. Here's where things got a little interesting. I tried a test using some metal ducting tape to see if it would power the LEDs, and it did. However, when I put it in the channels, I ran into two issues. First was the inability to solder to it, and the second was that it didn't work in long runs. So I ended up using two pieces of guitar string, and I soldered the connections to them, dropped them in the channel, and used a little CA glue to hold them in place. And now for the first test. I solder on my leads and put the resistor on the negative side. Make sure you do not forget the resistor or you'll be starting over. After confirming that all of the LEDs are working, I finished the neck assembly. One more precaution that I took was I put a piece of tape on the top of the truss rod before gluing the fretboard on. 
This was to make extra sure that I didn't get a possible short from the truss rod touching the back of the LEDs. The final step of the process is mounting the neck and wiring in the switch. I drilled a small hole in the end of the heel very close to the edge and I used a chisel to sort of create a notch. This is where my leads come out. I then fed them through the same hole I drilled for running the pickup wires to the body. I soldered the resistor in the middle of my negative lead wire and then put some shrink tube over it. This is to ensure that I don't possibly short out my LEDs, which unfortunately has happened before. The switch has three lugs, two positive and one negative. It's pretty simple to wire up. You solder the two negative wires together and then connect them to the negative lug of the switch. The two positive wires then go to their own individual lug. It doesn't really matter which one. And finally, install the battery box and battery and hit the switch. On a side note, I've had people ask me about interference with the pickups. Uh, there's very little voltage and current involved in this setup and does not add any interference or noise. This is my number one stage and practice guitar. I've played live and through a high gain amp with no issues at all. If you have any questions about this process, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, thanks for stopping by. Links for the parts can be found in the description below.